Hello campers, welcome back to the vlog. If you're tuning in for the first time, my name's Brad, I go by the Whalen, and this is my vlog on truck venture, off-roading, overlanding, having a good fun time. So I have some bad news to share with you and it's going to turn into some fun, cool content actually in the future. So the bad news is unfortunately the truck suffered some damage on the trail a few weeks ago and uh, it is not catastrophic, uh, but it's not great. Uh, we basically did some damage to the skid plate and underside of the front of the truck with the tow hooks and whatnot, uh, where those are located in the bumper. Uh, but what it's inspiring is a brand new bumper assembly and new intercooler assembly. So what we're about to do as we're here at Nick's Emporium of Oddities and Miscellaneous Things once again, we're going to get started on installing that new race intercooler today. Okay, before we get to today's build out, I'm excited to announce that today's vlog is sponsored by Off-Road Alliance. So a few weeks ago, after I got the trail damage to the front of my truck, I went on a Raptor forum and posted an inquiry asking about advice on, hey, maybe I'm gonna get an aftermarket bumper. I also thought maybe I wanted to get an intercooler set up as well while I'm doing it. And to my surprise, uh, heroes come in many forms, but in this case, it was a guy named Tyson uh, who worked for Off-Road Alliance and he reached out to me and started asking me questions about how he could help. And what resonated with me is that he was very interested in building a relationship and figuring out a solution to what I want to do with my truck uh, rather than just sell me parts. So that was a really cool experience and it made me think, hey, I worked with Off-Road Alliance before last year when I got all my suspension work. I got the SVC bump stop, I got the geyser front springs, uh, progressive springs up front, and then the icon leaf springs in the back as well. And it was the same thing. They were super interested in what was the solution they could help me with, not just about selling me parts. Um, so they want to build that relationship with their clients and customers to help them build the off-road vehicles that they want to build in their dreams, basically. And it's just super cool to work with a company like that that is really uh, valuing the relationship aspect of the process. So, excited to be working with Off-Road Alliance. Uh, go ahead and visit Off-Road Alliance uh, when you want to get a new mod or checking out something that you're gonna upgrade on your truck. Uh, everything that I'm doing in my build today is gonna be available in the description below as a link to Off-Road Alliance. Uh, and I'm also going to put in some past uh, mods that I purchased from them as well. So check all those out. And without further ado, we're gonna go back to the Emporium of Oddities and Miscellaneous Things and get on with the build. And here we have the skid plate. Uh, yep, you can tell it's a skid plate. So that happened. And as we get up here, truck is dirty in the back. And dirty here as well. Oh yes. And walking forward, we are moving into the shop and oh, the entire front assembly is removed in preparation for the new race intercooler. This is the centerpiece of the whole new upgrade. And although a bumper you might think was the centerpiece as a mechanic, anytime you get to put an intercooler in that's this big, oh baby. It's so shiny. And there's the front assembly, just chilling out over here off to the side all right we are about to show you the install of the intercooler but unfortunately we were not able to show you the removal of the front section of the truck because the body shop actually took that portion of the truck apart before delivering it here uh, for the intercooler install so we're going to get started and let's see how this sucker goes in unfortunately my mechanic never learned how to read at least it has pictures. Too many pictures. There are no instructions. There are no instructions. Why did they not ship instructions? Okay, just want to point out that even though we did not receive uh, paper instructions in the shipment, a little Google search here yields results we're looking for. So the first hit is the instructions to install the full race intercooler. If you are doing this yourself, you may want to 
bookmark this page. First up, since we didn't have to take the front of the truck off, that saves us a whole lot of time, but still have to get the uh, windshield, the air duct thing, off, and get the front intercooler out. Problem solved. There we go. Now this guy comes out. Do be careful when pulling this out. There's a couple of little rubber hooky things in the very back that there, and you don't want to damage your inner, your actual radiator or your uh, AC condenser. But this is no longer needed. Our intercooler is going up here. So part of the reason you end up putting a front mount intercooler on the Gen 2 Raptors is that they're all turboed, and the factory intercooler sits right here, directly behind the front bumper. Well, if you ever want to put a front, different front bumper on, all but maybe one of them require you to move the intercooler because the bumpers block all the airflow and then your intercooler doesn't do anything. So that's part of why you end up going with something like this full race that we got from Off-Road Alliance. And it will sit up here where there's no bumper to get in the way, so you can go ahead and trim these back or put a much larger bumper on the front with a winch. Uh, we are actually going to end up taking the tips of the entire horn off. Uh, this is the actual frame itself, and those are called frame horns. Um, and so we have to take all of this off and cut back quite a bit to increase the approach angle so that anytime you come up upon a random object, you have a much sharper angle between the front of the truck and the tire. So you can climb over bigger stuff and you have a higher ground clearance and just generally are a little less prone to Oopsies. Are you a seven? This is the boring part up top. And it's an eight. Oh. It's always an eight. Womp, womp, womp. All right. All right, now this isn't necessary, but it's just easier for me that I can get around by removing a couple of these top tubes and just generally having more access. All right, right now I am just undoing the charge pipes as they go into the intercooler right here, and there's actually a pair of them. That's this blue fitting. I've just undone the bottom one. I'm doing the top right now. I've then got to undo the charge pipe coming out that goes to the intake manifold itself in the throttle body. And then we have one, two bolts, drop this lower bracket, and the whole intercooler assembly itself, including its electric fan system, which I'll get to in a minute, comes out as one unit. So these are a pair of electric fans that actually are used to draw air through the factory Ford intercooler. Unbeknownst to me, although now, thanks to having one client who had the issue, these fans can get mud clogged in them and they whine like a supercharger from the afterworld. It's bad. So if you ever have a really whiny, whiny front end and you've been out hooning it for the weekend, check your fans. Hey, come on, baby. One last toast. Gimme. Gimme. <laughs> Hope that wasn't mission critical. All right. Oh. Just as a note to other non-turbocharged people, it is surprisingly normal to have oil in your turbo and intercooler system. That's just the life of turbo trucks and cars. So don't panic if you ever see that. All right, folks. So... Some of the stuff you're seeing down here, now that we've taken these, the huge massive intercooler off, you can see how much space there really is in here. And the intercooler took up a pretty decent chunk of that. So when we put the new bumper in, it's actually going to end up cutting something like that, where it takes quite a lot of this front horn off so you can increase your approach angle. This is the actual tube that goes up to your throttle body and through the intake. This is the cold side of the charge pipe. And the hot sides 
the pair here are coming from one each turbo. This one comes from the passenger side turbo. This one comes from the driver's side turbo. And this guy, just kind of ignore that. That's actually a transmission cooler. Uh, but it's not relevant to what we're talking about right now. So what we do now is we just extend these two pipes. They come up, around, into our new intercooler, back down, and then back into this tube. Problem solved. As mentioned before, Nick doesn't know how to read, and uh, he's looking at the pictures in the instruction manual. Pictures! It has arrows that tell me what to do. Now, remember I told you to go ahead and save those top bolts? That's because the new intercooler bracket, which is this big, monstrous powder-coated piece right here, bolts in using the factory hardware. Factory spots. Tucks right up underneath the radiator and the uh, air conditioning condenser. So, when mounting your new intercooler, you're going to want to make sure to salvage these rubber isolators. Because, as you can see by the hole, the hole is very large. It fits that quite nicely. But, the intercooler, like all other radiator intercooler type products, just has a stud. So, you just pop those right on and get on with your install. All right, carefully set this beast in. Those big rubber isolators. And shimmy them onto the top. Come on, buddy. Seat nicely. Play nice with others. Play nice with others. Wait for you and I'll love me. There we go. Come on. Ha ha. Winning. Next up is get all this plumbing out of here. We need to remove the charge pipe that goes up to the throttle body right here. And so a couple of electrical connectors, some uh, hose clamps, and uh, then we get on to plumbing. charge pipe. Old sadness, new hotness. This is the first time you have to use a fancy pants socket. It's a Torx T27 and this is to get the, I believe, mass airflow sensor um, out of the charge pipe. A sensor that basically tells the engine how much air is going in so it makes enough fuel so you get enough boom. Little cute and tiny. Uh, word of the wise, don't ever, 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 ever touch that little bit in the middle it will completely hose these things. No matter what design or shape they are, they all have something dangling down in the middle that's usually metal and coated. If you touch them, it will make them not read correctly and fry. And they're expensive. Nice, firm fit. Was it a little loose before? Yeah, with the other O-ring, it is a little loose. That's just because the other O-ring's been used. So, and then it comes with new hardware. Ooh, shiny. Beefcake! Hose clamps. So I'm assuming there'll be a couple of different sizes in here. These are monster turbo hose clamps, which is why they have the huge spring and everything. Just so they tighten up better than anybody else. And they don't come off. So, one for the money, two for the show. Drop this thing in there. Yeah, yeah. Go in there. Go in there. Ha. All right. Attach charge hose. Or boost, whatever that is, boost hose. Now, I'm going to leave these loose for now so I can get everything else aligned. Couplings. Which I got a little schmoo or something got on that one. And this one's also nicely labeled. A couple of bare ones. These I assume are going to go right about meow. And then there we go. Off to the races. And now a short intermission while we go pick up a new bumper. And we are here at Air Colors. Body and paint specialist. 
all right, the real big shiny is in this building that we need to get to because we're anticipating it. And it arrived sooner than we anticipated. The bumper is delivered here, new and improved aftermarket bumper for the Raptor. Um, you're all wondering which one I got. I'm sure of it. So we are about to make that reveal right now. Oh, the S SBC stickers might be a dead giveaway. Well, if you're wondering how they deliver a bumper, behold. And this is the SBC Mojave bumper. How exciting. <laughs> 